I met Martha five days ago when I was called to see her because she had been admitted to labor and delivery uh, because of complaints of a persistent cough that she'd had for several weeks. She said, you know what, honey, we gotta go. We gotta go to the doctors. We gotta go to the hospital to the emergency because I'm not feeling good. When I first went into the room to assess her, I noted that she was breathing very quickly. She appeared to be in some distress. She did have some oxygen on at that time, but it was not giving her enough oxygen to support both her and her baby. When she actually moved to go to the bathroom or did any kind of minimal activity, her oxygenation dropped very, very significantly. So I was concerned that she was developing a pneumonia and was actually much sicker. That time I called the pulmonologist, Dr. Abenauser, and um, he came and evaluated her and he agreed with me that uh, she was much sicker than, than the initial impression and that she needed to be transferred to the intensive care unit. She was requiring a high amount of oxygen and uh, it was a very worrisome scenario. We transferred her to the intensive care unit and proceeded to get a CT scan of her chest to get a better view as to what was going on with her lungs. The CT scan confirmed that she had diffuse pneumonia in both of her lungs. Uh, she had tested positive for influenza A. She was already on uh, Tamiflu for influenza A. However, she continued to get worse, requiring to be intubated and placed on life support. We brought Martha to the intensive care unit, really had difficulty um, getting her to have enough oxygen. Um, so that decision was made that she needed to be on a respirator. Martha and Victor both had some difficulty with that idea because Martha was really afraid that she would never get off the ventilator. She was afraid that she was going to die if we put her on a ventilator. But after we explained to her that it was more likely for her to survive if she went on the ventilator than if she didn't, she agreed to that procedure. Then despite being on the ventilator, she still did not improve as much as we wanted her to. As a matter of fact, 12 hours later, she was still uh, very, very hypoxic with very low oxygen levels. So at that time, even though the baby was still eight weeks before its due date, we decided that it would be best for both her and the baby to get her delivered. So that recommendation was made for a immediate cesarean section. So this is her CT scan. Uh, it was quite severe. Everything that's white is infiltrated. It's all pneumonia. You can see that it's pretty diffuse. You see it in every aspect of both lungs. She's lucky to be able to be breathing at this point. So these are the consequences of the flu. This baby never should have been delivered prematurely uh, had she not had the flu. And I think this may all have been prevented if she had received the flu vaccine at the appropriate time. Um, today I have four patients um, oh that are in the women's center in maternity with um, influenza, uh, three confirmed. In the last couple of weeks, we've had averaged about four a day. Um, None of them as ill as this patient, but um, yet we're seeing a lot mm -hmm. of, of influenza. So we really want to encourage pregnant women to get vaccinated for the flu because we're seeing a lot of it at the moment. It is extremely helpful. We really encourage everyone to get them, number one, to prevent this from happening. The patients themselves get very, very sick. I mean, this particular patient, we had to deliver her prematurely because mm -hmm. of it. Additionally, getting the flu vaccine allows them to protect the baby. The baby themselves cannot get the flu vaccine till they're about six months of age. So if the mother gets the vaccine while she's pregnant, the antibodies go across the placenta to the baby and the baby is protected for that first period of time. So anybody that is pregnant during the flu season or is going to deliver a baby during the mm -hmm. flu season, which generally is between Oct October and May, uh, needs to get the flu vaccine. And they need to get it every year because every year the strain is different. So it needs to get repeated. There's nothing more critical than a woman can do during her pregnancy, during flu season, than to get the flu vaccine. I'm very scared. Uh, he was born seven months, and he was born four pounds, uh, one ounce. Yes, I'm very scared. And you know, I think right now we don't have as many pregnant women as we would like getting the flu vaccine, and this is the kind of thing that we see. You're seeing the babies. Have you had any babies brought in from the home in the newborn period, like the four or five days of age, because they have influenza? We do. We have a, um, a baby that was born here, went home, and came back at four days old. 
and is in paediatrics and it tested positive for influenza A in that baby's in paediatric ward at the moment. And again, that's something that could have been prevented if the mother had gotten vaccinated during yes, the pregnancy. Yes, absolutely. It's really important that uh, we encourage our mothers to get vaccinated and once right. the babies are born also to make sure all the family is vaccinated during flu season because these babies really don't have any protection. Thank God that I'm alive and my baby and me are here today. She's better now and I'm happy for that. Get the vaccine. Like, if you're pregnant, don't be afraid to get the shot. You know, you can do it. I was scared. I thought something was going to happen to me if I got the vaccine. But in reality, if you don't get it, it it's worse, you know? Just, I don't want no one to go through what I went through. It was horrible. Um, you know, like, take care of yourself, your health, your children, your, your family, you know, get the flu shot. You know, like, it's healthy for you and you need it.